Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our virtual service. Just let me tilt this slightly because I just kicked the tripod as I got around here. Lovely to see everybody this morning as you join in and as you log on. Um, and it's such a beautiful day outside as we come to worship God this morning. Uh, just a couple of announcements um, to, uh, to, to let you know about this morning. Um, two, two lovely announcements, actually. Um, there have been two babies born, and I just want to share them with you. So uh, when you think about us being a big church, um, being Strain and Bally Black and Cardor Bally Freenis, it's lovely to be able to share the like of this um, with everyone together. Um, just let me get a pen in a second. Shall I write that down? Just as people come through and tell me birthdays. So the two announcements are that on last Sunday, um, Susanna and Neil McCloy had a, a bouncing baby boy. I have his details. He's George Eric, born on the 7th, 7 pounds and 15 ounces. And also Heather and Simon Christie. Sorry, I don't have all the details, but I know that you uh, had a little baby boy as well on Friday past. So it's lovely to be able to share the like of those announcements here on a Sunday morning. Um, so congratulations. Trust that you're getting plenty of sleep at this time. Uh, don't always bank on it. It'll not happen. Um, but we trust that as the children grow up, they would know God's blessing as would yourselves as a family. So congratulations. Also, just to say this morning, a couple of birthday blessings that we have. Um, just as the screen's been going up there, I've picked up on Graham Scandrit. You're going to be 42 on Thursday. So there's no secrets here. Everyone knows what's going on. Um, Elizabeth Ross, I did get a text message about you to say that it's your birthday tomorrow and that you'll be 48. But all of them pale into insignificance when you think about somebody who has a birthday this coming Tuesday. Um, from the family in Strain, Peggy Moore has a birthday on Tuesday, and Peggy is going to be 99 on Tuesday. So happy birthday to Peggy. Let's just take a moment and let's just pray, thanking God for those babies that have been born and to um, ask for a blessing for birthdays. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that we can come together again and worship you. Uh, and we thank you that we are a great big family all coming together and just celebrating and rejoicing and worshiping you yes in a different way but we do this together lord thank you for that sense of being connected lord for this morning we give you thanks for Susanna and neil and for heather and simon for two baby boys that have been born uh, thank you for your hand upon those families continue to look after them bless them and keep them safe as as those boys grow and go through various stages um, and checkups lord just just be with them and be with their families as well. Lord, just remind them constantly that you're with them during all of this, and thank you. Lord, for those who've had birthdays, think of Peggy, think of Graham, think of Elizabeth and others too. Um, Lord, thank you again for the blessing of another year. Continue with those folks, continue to bless them and their families, uh, and they know, they know your peace at this time. So Lord, thank you, and continue with us here this morning, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. So good morning, everybody. It's lovely to be back together again as we come to worship. Um, I don't know what your week has been like. I don't know how busy it's been or how quiet it's been. I don't know how much schoolwork you've done, how much you've been a teacher this week. Um, it is a different sort of week still at this time, but that doesn't stop us from doing this on a Sunday. It doesn't stop us from gathering together and in a different way, just praising and worshiping God. Um, you might notice the, the backdrop looks slightly different this morning. That's because we're back in Bally Black as we work, worship together because we are one big family. So it's lovely to be able to do that. So just let me share a few words with you this morning just as we come to worship God. These are the first few verses from Psalm 18. I love you, Lord. You are my strength. The Lord is my rock my fortress and my saviour. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the power that saves me and my place of safety. That's the God who we have this morning. That's the God who we worship as we think about his words, as we 
just quieten our hearts. So let's just do that right now. Let's come into his presence and let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as we gather on a Sunday morning, we just come to you and thank you for your goodness to us. Lord, thank you for the warmth of sunlight coming through the windows. Thank you for the rain that we've had over the last few days to water the ground, to crops, to give us nourishment, and to give us that sustaining power. Lord, thank you for this morning, the fact that we can meet, that we have this technology. Thank you that as we've done that, we've already had our breakfast, we've, we've got up, we've had a good night's sleep in beds that you have provided to us with roofs over our heads. Lord, there's so much that you have done for us that we can see around us, that we can touch. Father, we thank you more importantly for the things that we can't see, can't touch, knowing that you have done for us. We thank you for your love, the love which you pour out and you lavish upon us, the love which brought your sa our Savior, Jesus, your Son, to this earth, to, be, to die for us. Lord, thank you for just your sacrificial love, how it gives up everything to restore our relationship with you. Lord, you are so good, so kind, so generous, so gentle. And we thank you for that. Just as we worship you this morning, we ask that you'd be with us. As we sit in our homes, as we gather around tables, as, as we gather around computer screens and phones, as maybe we listen later on on CD, Lord, just as we worship you in a different way, may your blessing be upon us. May we have that sense of your presence, knowing that you're always with us. And Lord, when it's difficult, when we're struggling, may we know your arms carrying us. So Lord, thank you for this morning. And continue with us now, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Boys and girls, How's your week been again? Hope you've done lots of schoolwork. Maybe you've had a little bit of a, a, an easier week, have you? Who knows? But can you remember what we've been talking about these last few weeks? We've been talking about different pieces of fruits. Um, we've had a banana. We've had an apple. We've had cranberries. So now I'm going to bring you this morning, well, I don't know if it's a fruit or not. Um, I was having that discussion about this this morning. Some people call this a fruit. I may not necessarily call this a fruit, but let's ask you and see what you think. So whenever you've been running around, whenever you get really hot and bothered, do you get thirsty? Uh, and maybe do you, do you want something to drink? Maybe you'll have a, a glass of water. Maybe you'll have a glass of juice. I wonder if anyone ever has a glass of milk if you're feeling thirsty, do you? Or do you have a glass of milk in the morning with your breakfast? And when you think of milk, do you know where the milk comes from? Now, probably in most houses, the milk that you drink comes from cows, cow's milk. But maybe in some houses it might be slightly different. Well, maybe it's still cow's milk, but it's been changed in some way. Maybe it's, it's lactose free. Maybe you drink almond milk. Um, or maybe you drink milk from, well, let's say if you would call this a fruit, or would you call it a nut? I think it's a nut, but some people call it a fruit. Do you know what it is? When it comes off the tree, it doesn't look like this. When it comes off the tree, it is covered with a green casing around it, a husk. And then you have to break through that green casing to find this. And then you have to get through this to find out what's inside. Now, I don't know. I'm going to try and shake this beside the microphone of the phone to see if you can hear anything. If you've got really good hearing, and if the microphone was working really well, you might have heard something inside that sloshing around. Okay, so it's a coconut. So that's where the debate comes. Is there a fruit or is it a nut? Ask the adults at home and to get them to type in their answers. But inside this, there is water. 
which you can drink. So if you were really thirsty, and if you were able to cut into the top of this or drill a couple of holes, you could have a drink of the coconut water. If you got it open inside, then you could squeeze the coconut um, out and you could dry it out and you'd end up with coconut. There we are, we're back on again. Our connection has gone off. So you, you could squeeze it out and you'd get coconut milk. Do you know as well that from a coconut, you can also get coconut butter, you can get coconut oil, and then with the coconut that's inside it, you can dry it out, you can do lots of different things with it. You could make it into a cake and, and mix it with a cake. You maybe would like coconut fingers where you get a bit of bread roll and a bit of icing and put it on top. Um, my personal favourites, anyone like a bounty bar where you can do it? It's such a versatile thing. In fact, in some countries, people call this uh, coconut trees the tree of life because it does so much for them. You can use it for cooking, for baking. Everything is there. Um, and it gives us so much nourishment and goodness. But the water that's inside that, we need water. We all need water. Our, so much of our bodies is made up of water. And it reminds me of a story in the Old Testament. Now, if you were to go into the Old Testament, and if you were going to be a part of it called Exodus, in Exodus chapter 17, verses 1 to 7, you would read a story about God's people. Now, there the people are thirsty. So they've come out of Egypt. They've, let, they've, they've, they've escaped. God's helped them to get out because they were slaves there. And they are in the middle of wilderness or desert area. There's nothing much around them. There's not much food. And they definitely don't have water. And the people start to grumble and complain and moan and groan. Something boys and girls that you would never do. Sure you wouldn't. You never moan and groan. Sure you didn't. No, of course not. But these Israelites did. They moaned and they groaned because they didn't have any water and they were thirsty. And they couldn't do what we do. They couldn't go and just lift a glass maybe from underneath where they could have a drink of water. They couldn't run on tap. They didn't have any taps. There was no wells. They couldn't go to a well and put a bucket down the well. So Moses said, God, these people need water. And God told Moses to go over and hit a rock with his staff. And what happened? Water came gushing out. Now, it wasn't just a little bit of water, so that the people had to quickly gather it up before they would go thirsty again. It wasn't as if they had to ration that water out, but the water gushed out. God gave them more than what they needed. And that's the same with us. God gives us more than what we need. He just doesn't give us a little bit of goodness, a little bit of love, a little bit of support. He gives us everything that we need because our God is generous and he knows exactly what our needs are and he will always meet those needs. So the next time maybe you're in the supermarket and you see a coconut or the next time that somebody at home maybe is baking and there's coconut about or maybe there's coconut butter or coconut oil or maybe the next time that you see something like a bounty bar, you can remember that we get so much out of a coconut. It gives us so much nourishment and so much goodness. But God gives us so much more. God gives us everything that we possibly need. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that great? May you know God's peace and blessing. Boys and girls, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you again for your goodness to us. Thank you that you do give us everything that we need. Lord, thank, help us to be grateful for all that you have given to us. And help us to look out for others maybe who don't have as much, where we can share with them and help them as well. Lord, thank you. And continue with us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody said to me as we were typing that up, have you ever seen a monkey face on a coconut? Um, if you turn a coconut upside down, you'll see a little pattern on the bottom of it. Some people think it reminds them of a, a little monkey. Um, I don't know. I mean, coconuts are just amazing. So there you are. Now, look out for one of those next time you're in the supermarket. We're going to read God's word together. We're going to read together from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 18 to 24. Let's read what it says. I'm praying the Spirit on all occasions and with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people. 
Pray also for me, that whenever I speak, words may be given to me, so that I will fiercely make known the mysteries of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fiercely, fearlessly as I should. Tychicus, the dear brother and faithful servant of the Lord, will tell you everything, so that you also may know how I am and what I am doing. I am sending him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are and that he may encourage you. Peace to the brothers and sisters and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. Amen. We'll think about that in a a moment. Um, Can I just ask you, as we come and if we're going to pray together, just to continue to pray for the leadership in our churches. We have received a, a document through now which is designed to get us thinking about how once church, once we're allowed to open again, how we actually go about doing that, the different steps that we have to go through, the different things that we have to consider. Um, please pray for, the, for your leaders in church, for elders and for committee um, as they work through these documentations just to to try and see how we safely go about this. And also pray for church house and those who, um, again, are guiding us and leading us. And praying for our country and the leaders of our country as they look to dates whenever we can do things. Um, We've seen the shops opening now. Um, We hear the talk about schools and what's going to happen with schools and the debate going on between two metre distances apart or one metre distance apart. And then how that will work its way down through into church for us. So let's just take a moment and pray about that because it is something which is on our hearts and on our minds at this time. So let's pray together. Father, again, we thank you that at any time we can come and we can talk to you. We can come and we can pray and you will hear us. You understand us. And Lord, we thank you that you answer us as well. We continue to live, Father, in strange and difficult times. And sometimes we struggle with the logic of what we see around us. We see now all the shops starting to open again and we wonder about safety. And for many of our folks, Father, this is a difficult time. They'll be apprehensive and worried about going out. So Lord, help us all to be sensible. Help us all to take responsibility. To look out for those who are vulnerable and to help them in any way that we can. And whenever we are out and about, Father, help us to... Give people that space that they need to be, to be sensitive to them as we see them uh, and just not to, to force what we think upon others, but to be considerate at all times. Lord, for our government, as they seek to work their way through this, we ask that you would give them wisdom, give them understanding. Lord, may decisions be made not on a, on a political basis, but actually on, on what is best for people what is best for the health of our nation uh, to keep everybody safe and well. And Lord, within church, as we consider these things, as we look forward with expectation to a date at some stage whenever we'll be able to open again, help us as we work through the logistics of this, as we try to figure out what needs to be done, what we can do and what we can't do. And Lord, just give us patience as we do that. Again, we thank you for the help and advice that we get from Church House. And we ask that you continue to to guide those folks who are doing that. Help us, Lord, who are in church, to be sensible about this and to take it one step at a time. Father, we thank you that in the midst of all of this, you are still with us. That you are still very much in control. That you are still very much God. Lord, just remind us of this and help us to rely upon you for all strength that we need. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Folks, we have been thinking about the armour of God. We've been thinking about Ephesians where Paul instructs the people about putting on armour. And we get to the very end of that piece. And he starts to talk about something else. So let me ask you this. Whenever you think of armour, you think of an army and you think of a battle. You think of a fight that's going on. Well, you think of it in terms of, of an ancient battle, an ancient army, or whether you think of it in terms of, of a, a modern army. 
there is something for an army which is very, very important. You see, a leader of an army will tell the soldiers what to do. And the soldiers will go out to do that. But quite often, the leaders don't go with them. The leaders stay back because they're coordinating everything. They're putting it all together. So they need to know what's going on. So it's very important for an army as they fight together that they have communication. In days gone past, you would have had runners who ran backwards and forwards with messages. Um, You might have had carrier pigeons at one stage in the hope that the enemy didn't, whenever guns came along, shoot down your carrier pigeons. Then radios came out um, and used to lay, lay wires down and it used to be very common to cut your enemy's wires so that the radios wouldn't work. Then you had um, wireless radios, which were great, or nowadays, mobile phones and satellite communication. Technology has moved on, but the communicating is still there. The need for the soldiers to talk to the generals, the generals to talk to the front line, to know what's going on. In one way, that's what Paul's talking about here. He's talking about keeping our lines of communication open. He says, I'm praying the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Paul doesn't limit what people want to pray for here. He says, pray with all kinds of prayers and requests. In other words, tell God everything that's going on with you. Tell him everything that's happening in your life. Tell him everything that you request, that you feel that you need. God really knows. God knows before you say it what you're going to ask for. God is not like a general in an army who can't see what's going on down the road, who, who has to lift his binoculars and look through it, who has to look at a satellite image to, to maybe try and figure out what's going on. God's not like that. God is everywhere. God sees everything. God knows everything. But God still wants us to talk to him. I often say this when we talk about prayer, and I, and I, I don't apologize for it, and I will keep on saying it. God wants us to tell him everything. Even though he already knows what's going on in our lives, God wants us to talk to him. Why? Why do we want to talk to each other? Because we're interested in each other. We care for each other. We love each other. God loves us more than we can get our heads around. God loves us with an unlimited love. He wants us to have that freedom to tell him anything. You know, it's it's like a relationship that you have. Maybe it's with a spouse. Maybe it's with a friend. um, Maybe it's with a sibling. You know, you you have somebody who you tell everything to. They're they're your confidant. Sometimes that might spill out. Sometimes they break that confidence and maybe that relationship gets a little bit hurt. God doesn't break those confidences. God already knows them anyway. God knows it all. But he wants us to have that close relationship where we will tell him everything, where we will just spill out our hearts to him, where we will tell him the bad as well as the good. Because that's how we grow closer to God. That's how we love him more, just like he loves us. And that's really important when we think about life being a battle because life's hard. Life's difficult. Life's not nice. So to have somebody to talk to, to share that to, by, by giving him all kinds of prayers and requests, that shows the sense of our relationship with God. And then Paul takes that a wee bit further. He says, with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people. So in this battle, we've got to remember we are not alone. We are not isolated But rather, we do this as a group. We do this as a family. We do this as God's people. So we need to open our eyes. We need to look around. And we need to see what's going on around us with our fellow Christians. And we need to pray for them. You know, we often talk about in church about having prayer cells. And then we get nervous about that because it can create clicks at times and and we're very concerned about that but there is that sense where having somebody in church somebody with a church family somebody who's another christian maybe somebody who's outside of your own church 
who you can talk to, who you can share with, who you can pray with. Somebody again who will not judge you for what you say, but somebody who'll simply come alongside you, put your arm around you, put their arm around you and say, I'll, I'll walk with you and I'll pray with you. You know, maybe that's what's so difficult at, the, at this time. You know, we, we can't go down to somebody in church. We can't shake their hand. We can't put an arm around them. I mean, I'm sitting in a church this morning with just me and one other person, uh, Alec, just as, as we do this service. It, this is not how we normally see church because we're missing that relationship. So at this time, we have to do something different. We have to pick up the phone and actually phone somebody and say, how are you? What can I pray for for you? We have to say, we can meet outside. Let's get a cup of coffee. Let's sit down at this bench. and Let's just talk together. But we have to be there to support one another. There's no point going through this life um, with your head buried in the sand saying, I'm all right, Jack. I'm only worried about myself. That's not who we are. We're part of a family. And we need to look out for one another. We need to support one another. We need to help one another. That's what's so important. Paul's crying out here for help and support. He says, pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given to me so I will fiercely make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fiercely as I should. Paul's telling the people what's going on with him. He's in chains, he's in prison. And yet he carries on. Yet he needs their prayers. Yet he wants to keep going. How often do you feel imprisoned? How often do you feel in chains? How often do you feel you want to give up? God wants us to keep going. With the strength of our other Christians around us. With the strength of him. So let's rely upon him for that. This passage goes on to, to, to tell us something which is true about all of Paul's letters. Every time Paul writes a letter, Paul just doesn't post a letter as such or say, send the letter and say, there you are, go and drop that off to those people and come back to me again. Paul sends somebody with the letter who will help the people who are receiving the letter. So in this case, it is Tychicus, um, a dear brother and a faithful servant of the Lord. He says, we'll tell you everything so that you may also know how I am and what I am doing. Paul sends somebody to explain the letter, to um, draw it out, to expound upon it, as you would like to say, to, to go further with it. Yeah, yeah, Paul's written this. Let me tell you what happened. Um, Paul, Paul wrote this because he'd heard this had happened, and he wants to know if you're okay. You know, Paul has a real concern that these people would understand what he's writing about. So he sends somebody who he has trained and instructed to, to be able to help them. It's the same with us. How many of us, if any of us, can lift up God's words and in our own strength, in our own knowledge, I, I know what that means. Let's be honest, none of us. We all have either somebody who we go to to ask them, what does that mean? We have books on our bookshelf, which we turn to and we look it up. Maybe we have online resources um, where we can, we can type in and say, what, what does this mean? What is this, what is this talking about? We all need that help. And God knows that. So God has enabled people to write books. He's enabled people to have knowledge and insight so that they can help us to understand that. But we need to listen and we need to reach out for that. So we need to remember that God's word is complicated, it's difficult, it's confusing at times maybe even. So let's look for the help that we need to be able to do that. Because again, we are not alone. You are not a Christian going through this by yourself. God is with you and God brings alongside you people who will help you, people who will guide you. If, if anybody, if, listen, if you've ever been in a small group, you'll understand what I mean. You sit in a small group, in a Bible study group, and you go through God's word together, and you learn together. Yes, maybe there's a leader in that group. Maybe that leader has a particular gifting to be able to lead. They've got a particular understanding, and they're able to help you expound. But I can guarantee to you as well that your leader, as they lead you, is also learning. Your leader, as they listen to you, 
you are sparking ideas and things that they will explore, things that they'll seek out for themselves. And they learn, and you all learn together. That's the wonder of God's Bible. That's the wonder of how we do this together. We learn and grow together. So folks, Ephesians is a wonderful book. It's a great book. There's so much in it. But at the end, it encourages us to keep going. It encourages us that, yes, it will be difficult, but to reach out to one another, to support one another, and to help one another. May I encourage you to do that this morning. Let's pray together. Father, again, thank you for your word. Thank you for the wonderful things that your word teaches us and tells us. Lord, thank you that every time we turn to your word, we learn something new and something different. Lord, may we have that boldness to pray and to tell you everything that's on our hearts. May we have that boldness to stand up for you. I mean, may we not be so proud, Father, that we don't reach out to others for help and support and guidance. Lord, please help us to remember that we are a family and help us to look out for one another. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Folks, thanks for joining together this morning again. Uh, it's been great to see everybody here this morning. I trust that you will know God's blessing. And um, I'll be back again tomorrow morning at nine o'clock with Bible reading. Take care. God bless.